Hotep, I am the Amen Osiris, the one and only undisputed God of law. We are WWW, excuse me, we are Deception Stoppers, America's only child support education service. I am not a lawyer. This is not a law firm. I, I don't advocate you don't support your human offspring. Simply advocate you made them in private. Exercise your right to raise them in private. Okay. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the mailbox rule. Okay. There is a large misconception about mail, and I'm going to set it straight today. Okay. And the reason I explain to you do not accept mail from the 4D agency is very simple. Who is that mail? Who is the target recipient? Okay. In, in Title 4D, which you call child support, which there's no such thing, um, right? It is the non custodial pay rent or the obligor. Okay. And what we're going to do is see what happens, gentlemen, when you look up something, you got to look it all up. Don't just read one thing, right? And think, oh, well, you know, this is it. It's not. There's more to it. Okay. So this is the mailbox rule. The mailbox rule, also called the posting rule, which is the default rule under contract law for determining the time at which an offer is accepted, states that an offer is considered accepted at the time that the acceptance is communicated, whether by a mail, email, etc. Okay? Parties can alter their contract to not use the mailbox rule to determine between themselves at what time an offer will be considered accepted. The rule originated in a British case of Adams versus Linzel, 1818. Gentlemen, come on, man. That rule is long since vanished, okay? When the court adopted the doctrine and applied it to bilateral contracts, as with most of contract law, the mailbox rules vary from state to state. So mail is comes when it comes, it is an offer and it's a dealing with offer and acceptance. Let's look at the word offer, shall we? Okay. And uh, let's see here. Uh, what do I do with it? There we go. All right. Let's look at what an offer is. Offer. And this is from Black's Law's Dictionary. To bring to or before, present for acceptance or rejection. To make a proposal. To exhibit something that may be taken or received or not. Okay? I hope you're reading this. Okay? An act on the part of one person whereby he gives another the legal power of creating the obligation called a contract. An offer as an element of a contract is a proposal to make a contract. All right? Words, uh, let's see, personally or by a messenger. All right, who's the messenger? Wait a minute, let me go back up here and read this. It must be made by the person who is to make the promise. Number one, what promises other than you being subject to, 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 to Slavery, all right, financial bondage. What promises, what promise are they making? Well, we promise that if you sign, if you accept this contract, all right, you're going to be our bitch. And it must be made to the person. Who's the person that they're making an offer to? They're making an offer to a man to succeed to a non custodial pay rent or offer board, to whom the promise is made. It may be made either by words or signs either orally or in writing. Remember I showed you that personal responsibility contract that you want to ask for? There it is. And either personally or by a messenger. In this case, who's the messenger? The mailman. But in whatever way it is made, it is not in law and offer until it comes to the knowledge of the person to whom it was made. Mm -mm -mm. An offer must be so definite in its terms or require such definite terms in acceptance that the promise the promises and performances to be rendered by each party are reasonably certain okay so right here we're gonna go back all right so the personal messenger is the mailman but whatever way it is made it is not in law and offer until it comes to the knowledge of the person to who it is made 
All right, so if you don't get that offer in the mail, then it's not an official offer, okay? In law, if you don't accept that mail, it is not an offer. That's exactly what this is saying. Now, let's, let's go confirm this. We're going to go to the diligent efforts protocol, all right? And this is, comes from the Personal Responsibility Act, federal provisions, and uh, I do it there. Do it? Hold on. There we go. Is that it? Hold on. I'll be having so many pages open. I can't be keeping. Uh... Okay, here we go. Now, gentlemen, again, all right, this is from Directive 18. I'm going to use New Jersey's. All right, this is Directive 1208. Okay. And this is the dealing with the call. This deals with mail. Okay. Mail. The judiciary's longtime use of certified mail for notice and service of process for 4D enforcement proceedings is costly and not always effective. Gee, I wonder why. Individuals obligated to pay child support sometimes seek to evade that obligation by either asserting defect in notice and, and service or avoiding notice and service altogether. All right? There's no crime against avoiding service. If you don't want to be served, then that's your right. Okay? This is to advise you that effective immediately, the attached diligent efforts protocol provides an alternate method for meeting service process. Sir, gentlemen, there is no alternate method for reaching service process. Read uh, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 4M, I believe it is. Requirements include uh, for 4D matters. The protocol details how service of process may be documented to the court or hearing officer by demonstrating that probation, child support enforcement staff exercise diligent efforts to verify what? The obligor's address when serving a notice by ordinary mail. All right, gentlemen, the obligor is a what? Is the property of the Social Security Administration, is it not? Okay. Is it not? Yes, it is. I did that in the video yesterday. The obligor, look it up. The non-custodial pay rent and obligor, the same thing. They are the property of the Social Security Administration. And again, I keep saying it. If a, if a check came to your house, paid to the order of Hugh Hefner for $300 million, would you try to cash it? Okay. So moving right along. Now, here it is right here, gentlemen. The federal, not state, the federal Personal Responsibility Work Opportunity Reconciliation Act, PLORA, Public Law 104-193. See, people don't read this, all right? And incidentally, we have a copy of this in our law library, and you can find this in the law library, all right? Um, PORA established a legal presumption. What is a presumption? A presumption is mandatory unless rebutted. Someone is presuming something, all right, or assuming. It doesn't matter, all right? So they're making a presumption. Well, I, but I rebut your presumption, number one. I'm not an obligor. Number two, I don't accept mail with zip codes attached. Okay. So this creates a legal presumption in child support enforcement actions that service has been affected when notice is mailed. And it is shown that diligent efforts were made to identify the address of the party served. Who's the party getting served? Right here in the purple. If diligent efforts are made to confirm the obligor's address, then the courts may presume that a notice mailed to the address was actually served on the what? The obligor, okay? What is an obligor? That is federal government property, okay? They need you to be surety for that obligor. That's why I keep telling you, if you're not Hugh Hefner, you better not try to go cash that check, okay? If you're not an obligor, why are you accepting mail for an obligor? All right, if you don't live in the District of Columbia, why are you accepting mail with a Federal Revenue District zip code on it? That puts you in federal jurisdiction, okay? Let's keep it moving. Hold on. Okay, the Diligent Efforts Protocol was developed to provide, again, an alternate uh, method to establish service process. So what they're saying here is they're gonna violate federal rules of civil procedure for, uh, for uh, summons. All right, I think, like I said, it's 4M. They're saying, oh, we're going to bypass that. We're just going to do what we want. All right, PSCE staff exercise diligent efforts to verify the obligor's address, okay? ACS, 
ES as the primary tool for obtaining address information for child support obligors. Okay? Somebody look in the mirror and tell me if you see an obligor. Okay? Now, under this protocol, diligent effort requirements are satisfied when the obligor's address is searched. All right? It's not a physical address, gentlemen. Okay? It is a zip code address. When an obligor does not appear for a hearing and a judge or child support hearing officer is presented with the certification and probation represents that the notice sent by regular mail has not been returned, the hearing should proceed as effective service on the obligor is presumed at that point, which means if you return that mail, that regular mail to the sender, okay, the hearing cannot proceed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, well, we got we got the mail back. Well, he wasn't served. You know, the obligor wasn't served. We can't proceed. Okay. I don't care if they verify the obligor's address under whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as that mail goes back and you do not open it and you send it back, that hearing cannot proceed. If you, if there is a child so, uh, of support issue hindering your life right now. All right, this sending the mail back will only buy you time. All right, but if they're trying to get you to contract into child support, then sending the mail back, all right, minimum six months. And look at the video, all right? We had a young man who followed the instructions. He sent that mail back for six months, all right? And that case was dismissed because they could not effectuate service of process on an obligor, okay? Remember that. Please remember that. Now, let's go over here. Okay. Now, here's the Personal Responsibility Act, 104-193. All right, Section 304 says rights. Look at this word, rights to notification of hearing. Okay, so who are they notifying? In general, Section 454, 42 U.S.C., subsection 654.12, provide for the establishment of procedures to require the state to provide individuals who are parties to cases in which services are being provided under the state plan with a notice of proceedings in which 4D obligations might be established or modified. You notice it says might, okay? Why? Because if they can't get you to contract to become a obligor or a non-custodial pay rent, then it's not getting established, okay? Child support needs an obligor. An obligor is an artificial person. It is an ens legis. Now, here's the funny part, okay? And this is where you're messing up. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in. Look, this is see. This is where that that real school comes in, okay? See, a lot of people. Again, most people don't read the United States codes. U.S. U.S. Code subsection 17. This is 18 U.S.C. 1702. Obstruction of correspondence. Now, listen to me and read it along very carefully. Whoever takes any letter, postcard, or package out of any post office or any authorized depository for mail, matter, or from any letter or mail carrier or which has been in any post office or authorized depository or in the custody of any, le of any letter or mail carrier before it has been delivered to the person to whom it was directed. Who is the person to whom child support uh, mail is directed? With design to obstruct the correspondence or to pry into the business or secrets of another or opens secrets, embezzles, or destroys the same shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than five years or both. That means, gentlemen, by you accepting mail from the Title 40 agency, you are committing a crime. That mail ain't for you. That mail is meant for the non-custodial pay rent or the obligor. You have no business opening that mail. And if you have opened that mail, then guess what? You might as well go turn yourself in. You can get in prison for five years for opening that mail. Not only is the, the 4D agency bullshitting you, they also got you committing crimes. That's not your name on that envelope. That name is the name of the non-custodial pay rent. That is the legal name that is found on the social security card, which identifies the obligor non-custodial pay rent. And you're opening someone else's mail. You're committing a crime, gentlemen. All of you are guilty for committing those crimes. 
turn yourself in. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm the Ahmed Osiris, gentlemen, okay? Again, please don't take my word for it. All right, don't take anybody's word for it. You want to know something? Stop being lazy, do the research, all right? And do what needs to be done, okay? Once you do the research, there it is, okay? You shouldn't be accepting mail. And more importantly, uh, what do I do with it? All right, more importantly, uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, no. I got too many pages open right now. I always lose this one. All right, more importantly, gentlemen, it says right here, all right, if that, it, look, it says, when an obligor does not appear for a hearing and a judge or child support hearing officer is presented with the certification and probation represents that the notice, is, notice sent by regular mail has not been returned, the hearing should proceed as effective service on the obligor is presumed at that point. So what that means is this, the mail, okay? The mail, the mailbox rule is out the door. It does not apply because the mailbox rule only applies to what? A contract, okay? When you accept that offer, okay? You're, you're, you're going into a contract. The mail is the first form of jurisdiction. That is how the federal government gets jurisdiction and says, yes, we are confirming. This person accepted this mail with a zip code address attached and is confirming that, number one, it is a United States citizen within the Federal Revenue District, which gives us jurisdiction. Be careful, gentlemen. Okay? Be careful. Be careful. I don't get mail. You want to know why? Because <laughs> I don't accept mail with zip codes on it. All right? Nobody mails me nothing. And I mean exactly that. Nobody mails me nothing. I, I don't accept mail, okay? You are not obligated under any law, okay? And don't forget, remember, the mission of the judiciary is what? They're constitutionally entrusted to protect your, your rights guaranteed under the Constitution. Well, I have a right to not accept mail. I, didn't, I don't want your invitation. I don't want your offer, okay? You can't, nobody can force you into a contract, can they? Accepting mail puts you into a contract. That's all the mailbox rule states. And, you know, I, I really wish people would do more research about this, okay? I really do. Fortunately, there are certain, there are certain factions out there, all right? And fortunately, um, these factions don't, I mean, you know, maybe 5, 10, 15 hits on, on each video, maybe 100. All right, fortunately, all right, uh, there's only a limited amount of people getting the wrong information. This is the proper information, gentlemen, and do not take my word for it. Tell you what, tell you what, I'll go one better. Go down to the post office. Next time you're at the post office, walk in there and ask the postmaster or ask the person who's at the desk, right? Am I obligated by any law to accept mail from anybody who sends it? Okay, and email me, email me with their response. I can guarantee you that postman, that postman, that postmaster gonna tell you, no, you don't have to accept any mail. You just send it back if you don't want it. Okay, that's it's that simple. I wish people would stop putting out the wrong information. But gentlemen, um, if you accept the mail and you want to respond to it, by all means, that's fine. You have a, you know, you want to accept that mail and tell them, well, you know what, uh, I'm declining your offer, and these are the particular reasons why I'm declining your offer. Then that's your prerogative. That's totally up to you. Okay, you do not have to accept service process. If somebody comes to your house. Or, or your job or whatever and says, well, you've been served. I'm not serving ship. I don't want this garbage. You send it back. Okay? Or, all right, if you don't send it back, if you get served that way, then what you're going to do is respond to it. And make sure when you respond to it, yes, if it's a summons, all right, no problem. Go in there and tell them, oh, Big Daddy, um, I, I, here's your response. All right, I, I don't, I'm not accepting your offer. I'm not going into a contract. I'm not going into a personal responsibility contract with you. I don't want to deal with you. Okay, if you're a court, then there better be an injured party here. The court shall be open to every man for injury done him, his lands, his person, and reputation, and he shall have remedy by due course of law without sale, denial, or delay. That is the only um, uh, constitutional authority that the court has. Anything outside of that, they are operating outside of their constitutional oath and their constitutional creation. All right, and you do not have to be there. I'm the Amin Osiris. If you need me, my uh, email is in the description box. 4D 
uh, underscore destroyer at yahoo.com. And listen, gentlemen, you want to learn these lethal, deadly 4D techniques, all right, and become a 4D destroyer, all right, hit me at the email and we will train you, okay? Again, I'm going to tell you, we are America's only child support education service, okay? This channel receives over 2 million hits a year, which means there's over millions of people who have been properly educated, all right? Those are the results that we seek, proper education, okay? You follow the education, you utilize the education, all right? You will get results, okay? That's, it's just that simple, okay? All you gotta do, you start at the Federal Manual of Child Support, all right, and anything you find in that manual, you, you cross direct. And again, go to the law library, gentlemen. Okay? Go to the law library. All this information is at the law library, and we have it. Okay? I spend plenty of time at the law library. I've got the, uh, what is that called? I've got the West's. Anybody who don't know what West's is, all right, I've got the West volume, complete volume on this shit. Okay? Words, definitions, the whole nine yards. Do your due diligence, fellas. Do your research, all right? If you're tired of being a slave, then it's time to free yourself, okay? Free yourself. Nobody on YouTube can free you. Nobody's paperwork on YouTube is ever going to free you, okay? Whatever is written on that paperwork, if you do not master that technique, all right, you just put paperwork in and think, oh, man, it didn't work. No, nah, it doesn't work that way. You got going and fight. If you ain't picking a fight, <laughs> you're not waging war. You're not going to war. You're not going to get a victory. These people don't fear you. And I told you that's what's wrong with you. See, they fear me because right? I know what I'm talking about. They don't fear you okay? because you don't know what you're talking about. Now, I've got, uh, I spoke to a young man yesterday, and we have a very, very positive video coming out. All right, and this one is going to make your mouth water, I promise you. Give me a couple days. We're going to put it out there. All right, but get your minds right. Again, stop taking, all right, and don't even take my advice, gentlemen. Do your research. This is, I made this video to let you know accepting mail is voluntary. You do not have to accept that mail. It's also a crime when you open someone else's mail, and because that mail is directed to who? The obligor's address. Look, diligent efforts. When an obligor, look, PCS, PSC staff exercise diligent efforts to verify the obligor's address. If you're opening that mail, all right, you're, you're, you're stating that you're an obligor, okay? By not opening that mail and sending it back, you're going, all right, I ain't no obligor. Now, again, if you are in, if there's a child support issue pressing you right now, all right, sending back the mail will only buy you time. If they are trying to initiate a new case, sending back the mail consistently. All right. Well, if you do that for six months straight because they have six months to serve the obligor and find it, then you'll walk. And by all means, don't take my word for it. Look at the video and look at the letter we posted. OK, look at the letter that was sent. All right. they, they couldn't find the obligor, so they had to terminate the case. I'm the Amin Osiris. Once again, gentlemen, the master teacher is in the house. OK, and I am here teaching. That's what I am. As a teacher, it is my responsibility to put out the information. As a student, it is your responsibility to confirm that the information that I put out is true. And guess what? I'm quoting Bruce Lee. Hotep.